on guys it's Tia Sink and I'm gonna redo this tutorial really quick because uh <laughs> because I did it last night and it ended up being 20 minutes long and I really don't feel like uploading a 20 minute tutorial of what I was doing it on so let's go ahead and open a new project in After Effects what I'm gonna be showing you is just how to make really clean looking color corrections pretty much and um, I did a little bit more than that uh, in the other tutorial but not really gonna do that just because it took too long and it's too much work and it was on kind of shittily so shittily that's the best word ever all right but basically this is just really clean um, color corrections things that you can use in like you know either a clean edit or a uh, commentary or something like that so I'm just gonna go ahead and put this in here let me just get to a decent spot all right so as always, we're going to do this on an adjustment layer, and let's go ahead and add on curves. I'm trying to knock this out pretty quick, because I'm not trying to render out and upload another 20 minute tutorial. But let's go ahead and make a nice little S curve. Bring that back up. Alright, and we're done. That's all you do. I'm just kidding. <laughs> all right. Um, to do this, uh, especially when I do um, commentaries, I like to you know change the color correction slightly according to the map itself. So I'm just going to come into the individual reds, greens, and blues, and just kind of play around. I'm going to drop these reds down just a touch, and I'm also going to drop the blues. Um, hmm. I'm going to leave that there. Let's go to greens. Pull those down. And even it back up in the darks. And let's go to blue. And just play around a little bit. Alright, that doesn't look bad. Let me go back in RGB real quick. And I'm going to that that way all right next thing I'm gonna add let's add on let's go with vibrance slot that right there and if you ever wanted to know the difference between vibrance and saturation uh, saturation will bring up the intensity and the overall well, saturation of all the colors every color in the entire spectrum it will just kind of blow out whereas vibrance does its best to ignore um, as you can see to ignore the orange kind of colors like the more skin tone kind of colors um, you know like in this wall on the gun um, even this you know double kill isn't as saturated as say this over here in parts of the street things like that. So that's the difference. Um, so I'm going to bring the vibrance up to, let's go 30, and the saturation up to 10. Just make it pop a little bit more. It's a very subtle difference. Actually, I'm going to go 30 on that, 15 on that. A little bit more of a difference, not a whole lot though. Really just kind of making the reds come out. But it still looks better. And um, there's not a whole lot more to do after that, uh, but it is, you know, you want to adjust it to the individual clips. We can also add in tritone. And you don't want to do it like that. We are not agony. Trollolol. I typically just go with like a light blue uh, for the midtone area, maybe somewhere around there. And for the darks, also make this a very, very dark blue. And then I normally fade it around 80%. Just makes it, uh, I don't know, cleans it up a little bit, depending on how you have your curves. Sometimes if you have your curves all right, you might not need it. So let me actually, all right. That's looking pretty good. Um, if you're doing this for an edit and you want your black bars on there, uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, they'll just, say put on a uh, a new solid 
and then they'll you know mask it out and you know flip that but that that's not that's no good that's no good uh, there's two ways you can do it the best way is to download video copilots uh, they have like a entire kit for free of just essential things that you need um, and this is a free one you don't have to illegally get this so I'm going here 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 and take the aspect ratio one and you can just drag that on um, actually you need to make another adjustment layer so drag that on that adjustment layer and see so you got your aspect ratio slider this is a 1.5 aspect ratio and you know you can just go up and down up and down all that all that jazz that's not the way I typically like to do it typically I know the feel of the edit uh, ahead of time how I want it to feel and according to that I can have my black bars accordingly so what I do is I go to my composition settings make sure lock aspect ratio is unchecked and there are a few different aspect ratios um, excuse me I just burped a little bit not as intense as most of them uh, anyways uh, there are a few different aspect ratios I typically use um, that 1.85 um, but basically all, all you do is you just slide this down until in these parentheses you see the aspect ratio that you want a good one to use is a 2.0 aspect ratio so let's just slide it there all right and you want to make sure that your height is always at an even number because then it'll give you an error message and then when you upload it on YouTube you will have uh, little black bars on the left and right of your videos if the height isn't uh, an even number and I'm not exactly sure why but that is a 2.0 uh, aspect ratio it's just small lines at the top and bottom looks pretty neat pretty clean um, another one you can do is 2.25 I believe I used that it was either 2.25 or 2.2 um, in vicarious so there's that a little bit thicker bars but still you're seeing you know the majority of the screen and then you have your really like cinematic aspect ratios your really uh, thick black bars and um, there are a few of those so composition settings you can go 2.4 oops I'm going the wrong damn way alright so you got your 2.4 And then you have your cinescope aspect ratios, which are 2.55 and 2.59. So let's go 2.55. I'm actually using this aspect ratio on Hard for Hank episode 3. And as you can see, the black bars are really, really thick. And then you got 2.59 about there, which is just a little tiny bit thicker. And you know, these are really good for, um, I guess, just really um, intense edits. Not necessarily um, like fast-paced and actiony, but like if you're going, like, well, if you're going for a lot of cinematics and things like that, and if you're going for like a movie type feel, then that's definitely a good idea to use these aspect ratios. And if you want a changing aspect ratio, like say you want the entire edit. Um, or the majority of the edit in a say 2.4 what you can do is just go 2.4 so 532 nope 534 and then let's just duplicate this say this we'll just pretend this is the next clip and let's open that up and go to composition settings I'm gonna pretend this is a cinematic just because I don't want to import another cinematic we're going to make this a 2.59 aspect ratio because this is our super awesome cinematic. And then, you know, you can cut it right there. And wait a minute. Okay, well, this one would also have to be cut. There it is. And you get more black bars there. Let's go and make this 2.2 actually, just so we can see a little bit more. Alright, so that's what it would be like. 
And then, you know, you can also just throw this on here and... Anyways, that's about it. Shut up. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Sorry for wasting your time with a meaningless tutorial that most of you already knew how to do anyways. But it's been TS Inc. and I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I am probably, maybe, possibly going to do a Think With Hank episode sometime later this week. So look forward to that. Anyways, leave a comment telling me what you think my next tutorial should be on, because quite frankly, I am running out of ideas. Uh, because I don't want to do like quick little, you know, two minute tutorials, because those just feel like a waste of time. I'm not going to dedicate a whole day for a two minute upload. Um, so leave a comment, give me uh, give me ideas on some pretty decent uh, tutorial ideas. Uh, leave a like if you want to or don't, but at least leave a comment just because I like talking to you guys and I like reading comments. I do actually read literally every single one of my comments on every single one of my videos. Uh, just because I don't respond to it uh, doesn't mean I didn't read it. It just, I, you know, I can't be a, uh, I can't really respond to every single comment. And, you know, sometimes there's a comment that I want to respond to and I just don't know what to say to it. I mean, well, how the fuck do I reply to that? Anyways, um, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. It's been TS Inc. I hope you guys enjoyed.